May the holy names of Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today the Catholic Church in God's providence gives us the great feast of this Carmelite mystic. This great saint who wrote many beautiful things, treatises on the life of prayer. In God's providence, he gave us this saint. She was born in 1515 in the 16th century, as it were, to combat the, all the heresies would come a few years later, 1517 with Luther. This is the century where many, many saints were born to counter this Protestant rebellion. There are few who have made such an impact on the church or the lives of believers as this great mystic and saint today, this Carmelite Saint Teresa of Avila. If it were only her mysticism, her writings, or her reforms of the Carmelite order alone, it would suffice to place her with the saints. But with the combination of all these, give Teresa, Saint Teresa a very honored place among the saints. Looking at her biography, her writings, her mysticism, and her reforms will help us all to grow in our path and call to be holy. Born in the early 1500s in Spain, St. Teresa also had a, an interesting family history. Her grandfather was a convert from Judaism and would actually face the Inquisition for allegedly returning to Judaism. St. Teresa's mother raised her as a pious young girl and the young Teresa loved to read the lives of the saints, particularly the lives of the martyrs. She was so inspired at an early age by these stories of the martyrs that she left home with her brother at the age of seven to try to become martyrs, seeking out Muslims invading Spain. Thankfully, her uncle found the two young children and brought them back home. When she was only 14 years of age, her mother died and then she turned in a deep and profound way for help to the Blessed Virgin Mary to overcome this traumatic experience. She left the boarding school where the religious educated her and then she eventually entered the Carmelite order. While in religious life then, Teresa began to read deeply mystical literature and became deeply interested in the progression of the soul's relationship with Jesus Christ. She began to experience then visions of Jesus Christ that some people claimed were not from God at all, but she was reassured by her spiritual director that these were real. She went through many difficult dry periods and when she was in prayer and when she was nearly 40 years of age, however, Teresa found herself dramatically called back to the practice of contemplative mental prayer. She experienced profound changes within her soul and remarkable visions that seemed to come from God. Under the direction of her confessors, Teresa wrote about some of these experiences in an autobiography she completed in 1565. She was then this giant of prayer. She wrote about the different levels of prayer and she also wrote this beautiful treatise on the journey of a soul called the interior castle. Teresa has always been accustomed with, to contemplate Christ's presence within her after receiving him in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Now, however, she understood that the presence she received did not fade. God was in fact always with her and had always been with her. It was simply a matter of putting herself in his presence with love and affection as she could do at any moment. This revolution in her spiritual life enabled Teresa to play a significant role in the renewal of the church that followed the Council of Trent. She proposed a return of the Carmelites to their original, more penitential rule of life, a simple and austere form of monasticism founded on silence and solitude that had received papal approval already in the 12th century and was believed to date back to the Old Testament prophet Elijah. 
Together with her close collaborator, the priest and writer later canonized as Saint John of the Cross, she founded what is known today as the Order of Discalced Carmelites. The reform met with fierce opposition but resulted in the founding of 30 monasteries in her life. In one of her visions, she saw an angel pierce her heart with a spear with a golden tip, and the pain, instead of being debilitating, became a, a movement of ecstasy for the mystic. In this point, she made a vow to always do what was more perfect. This event became symbolic of her life and that she was chosen in a special way to share in the pain of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Her writings on her mystical theology, particularly the accent of the soul towards God. This is the book we mentioned, The Interior Castle, where she encourages us to understand and to know our own soul. The seven interior rooms to know our own soul. Encouraged by friends amongst the clergy that believed in the value of her vision, Saint Teresa began this work in 1577 to write the vivid book about the relationship between the God and the human soul. Saint Teresa lived with a constant friend, the cross of Jesus Christ. Her health was very fragile and she almost died when she was very young. Furthermore, Saint Teresa of Avila, to carry out the reform of the Carmelites, she suffered attacks and persecutions from even many of the nuns who were with her in the convent, who preferred a more comfortable lifestyle, and even attacks she received from priests and from other ecclesiastics. Instead of being discouraged and losing heart, she joyfully trusted in the Lord, all the more anyway, because it was his will. This is the great mystic of today. During the course of her religious life, Saint Teresa of Avila loved also the Blessed Virgin Mary, as is common in all the lives of the saints, and hopefully in your life, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. The title of her specific marine devotion was Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Never forget in your love of Our Lady to wear the scapula of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. This is your external sign of consecration to Mary. Furthermore, we know that Saint Teresa had a beautiful love of the glorious Saint Joseph. Saint Joseph, our spiritual father. She attributed her recovery from a sickness that almost ended her life to the powerful intercession of the great Saint Joseph. Also, in every new convent that she established, she gave the name San Jose or Saint Joseph. She also tells us that we need to foster and cultivate this love of Saint Joseph because we will only now know the greatness of this saint and his intercession when we die. Teresa's health failed her for the last time when she was traveling through Salamanca in the year 1582 at the age of 67. She accepted her dramatic final illness as God's chosen means of calling her into his presence forever. She died then on this day, October the 15th, 1582. She was canonized March the 22, 1622, along with three of her greatest contemporaries, Saint Ignatius Loyola, Francis Xavier, and Philip Neri. In 1970, Pope Paul VI proclaimed St. Teresa as one of the first two women and female doctors of the church, along with the 14th century Dominican St. Catherine of Siena. From her writings to her contribution to the understanding of mental prayer, this is a great gift to the church, this great gift to meditate. We pray, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that you perhaps will buy her book called The Conversation with Christ and learn how to meditate at least 15 or 30 minutes each day. This is her work from her writings to the contribution, as we said, of mental prayer and mysticism. To the continued faithfulness of the Carmelites, 
we have so much to be thankful for for St. Teresa of Avila. The best way we can honour her is to begin and engage in the first stage of, our, of her soul's ascent to God and begin to practice this mental prayer ourselves. And hope that God gives us the grace of beginning, of bringing our soul into union with himself because this is the, the end point to be united in have this mystical marriage with our Lord. Also remember that this great treatise that St. Teresa wrote was helped by her, one of her great confessors, who was Franciscan. He was called St. Peter of Alcantara. And we know that in his, also in his works, the formation of the treatise on prayer that he was using was actually written by the great Franciscan, Blessed John Don Scotus. So there is a, a, this great connection with this Franciscan mysticism with the Carmelites. Note well also the reality that the living holy souls, such as St. Teresa on this earthy pilgrimage, also seem to have one great characteristic in common. This is their sense of humor. A famous story perfectly sums up her spirited character. As St. Teresa made her way to the convent during a, rain, a fierce rainstorm, she slipped down an embankment and fell squarely into the mud. The irrepressible nun looked up to heaven and admonished her creator and maker and said, if this is how you treat your friends, no wonder you have so few of them. You have so few of them. When teaching our nuns what it, it meant to be faithful, a faithful religious, Teresa put an emphasis on having a good sense of humor. She wrote, a sad nun is a bad nun. A sad nun is a bad nun. I am more afraid of one unhappy sister than a crowd of evil spirits. What would happen if we hid what a little sense of humor we had? Let each of us humbly use this to cheer others, she said. Her sense of humor was also allowed her to recognize her own faults and her needs for grace. Like we read in the scripture today, the need for grace with the, the wise virgins. She writes at the beginning of her autobiography, having virtuous and God-fearing parents would have been enough for me to be good if I were not so wicked. But Teresa wasn't just a good joker. She also was a fierce reformer who didn't have any time for false piety. She once said, from silly devotions and sour-faced saints, good Lord, deliver us. Teresa reminds us that sometimes laughter is really the best medicine. All the saints know we have, have, this, have this great and interior deep joy. Laughter is the best medicine. A healthy sense of humor will keep our head on straight and make us able to see the beauty of the world. God never said we need to be sour-faced, to be holy. So if you want to become a saint, maybe the first step is to lighten up, smile, and your joy will be complete in Jesus Christ and the Blessed Virgin Mary. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.